My name is Lindsay Kernut, and this is On Air with Heritage Action, where we break down in five minutes or less how you can get involved today in the fight for conservative values. Democrats may be shutting down schools in Chicago, but they cannot stop President Biden from getting his report card. And what is the president's report card, you may ask? Well, each economic indicator is kind of like a class in school. Rarely is the president going to get straight A's, but as long as things are trending in the right way, most voters are happy. I've got very bad news for Biden. In class after class, he's failing. So let's run through some of those indicators that President Biden is struggling to improve. And first up is jobs. So a lot of these liberal pundits were very optimistic going into December before those job numbers were released. They had estimated there would be 422,000 jobs added. But last Friday on January 7th, the U.S. jobs numbers were released, and the numbers were a dismal 199,000. That's 47% of what was estimated. 47% is an F. Perhaps those numbers would be higher if Biden wasn't making people choose between getting the job or losing their jobs. Coincidentally, the day those jobs numbers dropped, Biden had his lawyers over at the Supreme Court arguing that his administration has the right to force private employers to require that their employees be vaccinated. Next subject is energy. Yesterday, Tuesday, January 11th, crude oil closed at $81.22 a barrel. That's the highest level for oil since November 11th, 2021. This is even after President Biden announced the largest ever release of barrels from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve on November 23rd. That was a very desperate last ditch effort and it didn't change 12 months of bad policy. As of Tuesday, the average price of gallon, for a gallon of gas was $3.29 per gallon, which is 99, or sorry, 97 cents higher than a year ago. Every time you put 10 gallons of gas in your tank, know that you are paying a $10 more extra than what you would have paid a year ago. So call that the Biden gas tax. And what was Biden's plan to increase energy production? (laughs) Well, if you recall, his secretary of energy was asked that exact question. And let's see how that went. What is the grand home plan to increase oil production in America? (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) That is hilarious. Would that I had the magic wand on this. That's a failing answer if I've ever heard one. Another F. So what's Biden's grade on inflation? Over the past few decades, we've really grown accustomed to low inflation here, where we've seen prices increase maybe 2 to 3% a year. And that's viewed as widely as a good thing, as inflation is a tax on our money. If prices rise, our savings don't buy as much. So what's Biden's grade on inflation? This morning, Wednesday, January 12th, the Bureau of Labor Statistics released the latest numbers for the Consumer Price Index, a widely used measure for inflation. 7%. And what's Biden's response to inflation? And she was saying, do you realize it's over $5 for a pound of hamburger meat? $5? Well, this is partly, you know, the pound of beef today costs 5 bucks compared to less than 4 bucks before the pandemic. Biden seemed absolutely shocked to learn that a key food staple is up 25% last year. Another failing grade. So in sum, it seems like the president has slept through most of his classes last year. And in turn, he now has straight Fs. But maybe there's some room for extra credit. Given that it's a new year, we're thinking that President Biden has set his own New Year's resolutions. He wants to maybe focus on the economy, do better in those areas, and really improve the lives of all Americans. But let's check in and see what he's been up to. On Tuesday, Biden flew down to Georgia to put himself front and center of a political show to nuke the filibuster. Also, Chuck Schumer can pass through one, two, or maybe even three of his anti-voter election bills in the Senate. These bills would take power away from the people and give that power to D.C. bureaucrats. They would gut voter ID laws, they'd mandate same-day registration, and they'd require ballots cast outside the voters' precinct to be counted. It's all under this guise of being for the voters or protecting democracy, but in reality, it's for the politicians. That's why there's a provision in this bill that spends your public money on political campaign ads. They might not tell you that, but it's in there. Biden's got a terrible economic report card and voters aren't happy. And it's funny, even his own party is running away from him at this point. It's why Stacey Abrams, that Democrat candidate for governor in Georgia, didn't even show up to his speech on Tuesday. She didn't want to be seen on stage with Biden. 
So in summary, Biden doesn't have a plan to improve the economy, only a plan to rig the election laws for his party. So this week, take action by calling your senators. They need to hear from you. Tell them you're opposed to nuking the filibuster and that you're opposed to putting D.C. bureaucrats in charge of your elections. Go to SaveOurElections.com to learn more. That's it for another episode of On Air with Heritage Action. Thank you for tuning in. Share this episode with your friends and be sure to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Rumble to stay in the know and up to date with Heritage Action. And one last thing, if you'd like to get updates on the podcast sent straight to your phone, text PODCAST to 51776. That's PODCAST to 51776.